Daisy. McGrady, I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> you haven't been avoiding me, have you? <laughs> How could I stay away from someone as cute as you, Daisy? Uh, you're a lousy liar. But I'll just play stupid and pretend I don't know that. So, what do you need? I got it, Daisy. I found the cure to Duncan's disease. Oh my god. That's wonderful news. How'd you do it? Last time you tried, the Pharaohs almost chewed you to bits. I didn't do it alone. The friend here got me through medtech. Now, all I need to do is to get the cure into Duncan's hands. Can you help me? Of course, McCready. You've saved my behind more than once. It's the least I can do. It's okay. You can trust me. I swear I'll get the cure to Duncan. Circling back around. What did McCready do to help you out? Running a business in a town like Good Neighbor is a challenge. Let's just say I've had my share of unfriendly customers. And McCready's been there to help me handle the situation. If McCready trusts you, then that's good enough for me. I appreciate that. He's actually not so bad. Once you get to know him. I'll get the sample on the first caravan leaving the Commonwealth. The driver owes me a few favors, and he's reliable. It will arrive at your homestead in no time, McCready. Thanks. You're a doll. Hey, do me a favor. Take care of McCready for me. He's one of the good ones. Hey, Hancock. To think I ever doubted you. Thanks. You're not so bad yourself. I never get many complaints. It's just real rare these days. Find someone who's not willing to take things the way they're handed to them. Too many good folks not willing to get their hands dirty. And too many assholes taking advantage of it. Look at what happened to Diamond City. Before McDonough took over, it was a half-decent place to live. A little stricter than I usually go for, but not terrible. I thought he and I had a pretty happy childhood. But then he decides he's gonna try and get elected with his anti-ghoul crusade. Mankind for McDonough. Before you know it, you got families with kids lining up to drag folks they call neighbor out of their homes and throw them to the ruins. You and McDonough knew each other as kids? Oh yeah. Guy's my brother. Grew up together in a little shack on the waterfront. Guy was the standard big brother. Entitled. Punchy. Liked to shove rotten potatoes down my shirt and slap my back. But I never thought he'd be capable of something like what they did to those ghouls. How could they do something like that? There'd always been a pretty big gulf between the folks living in the stands and folks down on the field. McDonough ran on it because he thought enough of those upper stands assholes would vote for him. Guess he was right. I remember storming into his office above the stands after the inauguration speech. He was just standing there, staring out the window, watching as the city turned on the ghouls. He didn't even look at me. Just said, I did it, John. It's finally mine. Should have killed him right there, but I don't think it would have changed anything. Instead, I pleaded with him, begged him to call it off. He said he couldn't. He had nothing against the ghouls. He was just carrying out the will of the people. And he couldn't betray the voters. And then he smiled. That hideous fucking mile-long smile. He never smiled like that when we were kids. I didn't even recognize him. Wait. What do you mean, you didn't recognize him? I don't know. Just didn't seem like the guy I grew up with. When I'd first heard the rumors, he'd been swapped for a synth. Thinking back on that night, I thought it made a lot of sense. But now, I don't know. I don't think I buy it. I've seen him since then, and there's no way they copied him that perfectly. Even got his tight-ass walk. But at the time, I just needed to get the hell away from him. Him and that whole damn city. He murdered those ghouls. Him and that whole damn city. I still wasn't a ghoul at this point, so I didn't have to leave, but I couldn't bring myself to stay in that cesspool after that. I'd been sneaking off the good neighbor for years to get decent cams, so I knew the safe routes. 
I managed to track down a couple of the families, lead them there. But most couldn't get used to the good neighbor lifestyle. I brought them food for a couple of weeks, but after a while, they just disappeared. Folks in Diamond City signed their death warrants, and all the good people were willing to just sit by and watch. I felt like I was the only one who saw how screwed up things truly were. Who couldn't just pretend things were fine. Still feel that way. Or, I did. Until I met you. I know I run my mouth, but having someone who sees the world for what it is, and is willing to do something about it, it's meant a lot to me. I feel damn lucky to have you as a friend. You're not going soft on me, are you, Hancock? Hey, everyone's entitled to some softness. For me, it's pretty much everything below the eyebrows. Well, thanks for hearing me out. You probably weren't looking for a history lesson, were ya? You wanna hit the road? Hey. I'm 
just getting started. This place can feel strong. Too much machine. Say the word if you want me to take a look at that terminal. You got a real way with machines. That'll do it. Protectron on duty. Don't move. Put your hands up. Thank you. 
she tries to leave, kill her. You must be pretty strong to make it here. Oh, were those your guys? I thought they were just trying to throw me a barbecue. Huh? Like your style, stranger. Been a while since anyone had the guts to talk to me like that. See, Jake? Here's someone who might actually be worth my time. Unlike you. But, You're gonna kill me. But I brought everything you asked for. Stealing things from your family farm doesn't prove your strength, boy. Though this wonderful sword you brought does put me in the mood to give you one last chance to prove your worth. What do you say? Kill that prisoner and prove that you aren't completely useless. You said we'd be raiding outside the Commonwealth. These people aren't even a threat to us. Prove to me that you can kill! It's him or you. Oh god, what do I do? What do I do? What about your family? Is this what Abraham would want you to do? Please, let me go! I thought he hated me. Did... did he send you here to find me? What happened between you two? Just... I don't know. I can't ever manage to live up to his expectations. You don't need them. They make you weak. Did he really send you here to find me? Not exactly. But there's still time to turn things around. You're right. It won't be easy. But I can still make things right. I don't want to join the Forge. I just want to go home. Last hey, chance, look. Jake. Just the Brotherhood is if real. You don't kill a prisoner before I count to three. Well, it's over. One. Help! Two! Three! <laughs> Hey there. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. I, I, I messed up. I panicked. You're lucky I have a soft spot for dumb animals. I, uh... Yeah, I, I messed up pretty bad. I, I'm sorry. Look, I, I should probably try to go home and make amends. I know I've got no right to ask, but I bet if you're there to explain, things with my dad would go easier. I bet if you bring my great-granddad's sword, he, he'll make it worth your while. He always tries to deal fair with people. I'll wait for you by the overpass near the farm. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. I'm getting out of here.
I'm so nervous. I, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Here goes nothing. Is that my boy come home? What? Jake's back? Oh, thank God. Papa, please. I, I know I screwed up pretty big. I, I thought if I joined up, I could keep them from raiding our farm. I didn't. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't care what you thought. I told you. Abraham Francis Finch, that's enough. Mama, if... Shut up, Jake. If I hear anything out of either of you, you'll both be peeling potatoes for the next year. I've watched you two go at it for years and tried to let you sort it out for yourselves. Abraham, your son is a grown man. And if you expect him to act like one, then you'd better stop treating him like a child. Jake, your father and I have been out there, and we know it can be dangerous. We just want to make sure you're prepared. There, it's over. And if I hear another word about it from either of you, so help me. She's right. Thanks again for getting me out of there. Excuse me. Thanks again for getting me out of there. Mr. Finch. She's right. I've been a fool. There's no way I can thank you enough. Here's something for your help. I think you should hang on to that sword. It'd put a smile on Granddad's face to know it was being used to help people. for something like that which I hey there would be you uh you ready to talk now I promise exactly it won't take long then you I hope nothing's wrong wrong no not at all I've been waiting for the right moment to talk to you and I suppose this is as good a time as any after helping me get Duncan's cure for med tech I figured I owe you something and I always pay my debts here I wanted you to have this I know a carved toy soldier is a strange reward for risking your life, but this one's special. It means a lot to me. If it's special to you, then it's a thoughtful gift. Thank you. You're welcome. Just be sure you don't lose it. My wife Lucy gave this to me right after we met. I, uh, I told her I was a soldier and she made it for me. Never could bring myself to tell her the truth. That I was just a hired killer. And the soldier story was the best thing I could come up with. I didn't want to lose her because of what I was. She ever find out the truth? No. It doesn't really matter anymore. She died a few years back. We made the mistake of holing up in a metro station one night. We didn't know that the place was infested with ferals. They were on her before I could even fire a shot. Ripped her apart right in front of me. There was nothing I could do. Took everything I had to escape with Duncan in my arms. Maybe it would have been better if we died there with her. You may have lost your wife, but you saved your son. That counts for something. Maybe. I don't know anymore. Damn, I miss Lucy. No matter how bad things got, she was always there with a shoulder to lean on. It gave me... Well, it, it gave me the courage I needed to press ahead. To never give up. When she died... I thought that feeling was gone forever. Then I met you. You have the world's problems in your back, and here you are helping me with mine. Lending me your shoulder like Lucy did. I just want you to know how much your friendship means to me. Hey. Only best friends can share feelings like that with each other. And I aim to keep it that way. Anyway, thanks for hearing me out. Taking all that weight off my shoulders makes the journey a little easier, if you know what I mean. Speaking of which, it's about time we got back on the road, don't you think? Can't believe what a damn fool I've been. <laughs> 